Hey, what's up? My name is Edward, DJ Purple Love, founder of Backpack, the DJ booking app. This podcast is designed for DIY, do-it-yourself event planners. I myself am not an event planner, so every week, I sit with experts in their specific fields to give you the tools to elevate your event from a gathering to an actual party. This is From Gathering to Party. Hey, hey, what's up? Today I am with Lucy Martin, master of good times. (laughs) How are you today, Lucy? I'm good. I'm good. (laughs) Good, good. So today, Lucy is going to be talking to us about how to create a unique event for places that don't necessarily have unique events. Is that right? Yeah. (laughs) How to create that vibe that people go home uh, telling people about, you know? Before we go into that and dig into the the meat of the conversation, uh, we like to start the show with music. Uh, so, you know, what are you into today? What's what's going on? Past, present, future? What, what, what are you What are you feeling? Um. Okay. Presently, I'm a big Posty fan. Okay. Um. But my roots go back to the like '70s. Uh, Bruce Springsteen is a hero. <laughs> um, I I don't know. I I like music today, but I'm I find that I'm more attracted to music from before when you didn't have to have a personal brand on Instagram. Also. Okay, so so Bruce Springsteen, name a song. Uh, Dancing in the Dark is a good one for this one. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know why, I just love it. <laughs> this is a good song, this is a good song. So, why this song? Um, it's, it's funny, it, it gets a crowd going in a certain way because it kind of brings in all generations. I was okay. at a wedding and this came on and... I don't know, it's just... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why I like it. I see you over there bob- probably just bobbing like, your head. <laughs> it's probably because like my dad liked it. You know, okay, like it, yeah. that stuff's built in. But uh, I like the boss. I like the uh, he really tries to take on you know the American dream versus American reality, and he plays in that. And he's got a New Jersey boy experience, and he's sincere. I don't know. I don't know why I like him. <laughs> I just do. <laughs> I'd like to meet, if you're out there, I'd like to meet you. (laughs) I know a little bit about you and the type of events that you've thrown here in L.A., and they are some very, very unique events. Maybe start there and and tell everybody about some of the events that you've thrown and and how you've made them such a success. Well, thanks, Edward. Um, No, (laughs) Uh, I think uh, where my events have been getting some traction or just positive feedback is a they're they're sort of parties that make fun of themselves so there's a self-deprecating aspect to all of them and I think people in LA especially are you know always going to events and it looks you know your social media you want to show that you're out there and you're you're doing things constantly but I think it's a little bit exhausting for a lot of people even if they go to events that they don't like Um, they still are trying to be out. And so anyway, with my events, I try to incorporate the guests in in the joke a bit so that when they they come to a party, like they're there to have a good time, um, we make the party fun and funny in a way where it actually makes them look more interesting, the guests look more interesting for being there and what they think is funny. And um, and one of the events we did was, I mean... I don't know if it was controversial, but uh, high risk, high reward. Okay, <laughs> um, I'm interested. <laughs> no. Um, this Halloween, uh, we threw a fake funeral uh, for me, and um, that was super fun and hilarious. We rented out, like, an old converted church, and, um, you know, it was ve- it was decorated as a, f- a funeral, but really a dance party and open bar, and, um, and then... Yeah, I can explain more. So you threw a funeral for yourself. 
And you mentioned earlier that you incorporate the guest into the event. How does that work when it's a funeral about you? Well, my narcissism um, was profound that day. Uh, but what I did, which is creepy and takes a little extra effort, is um, I sort of stalked. You know, most of the guests. It's it's a my guest list is, is a community that. Um, so I know a lot of them, and we're just slowly growing and friends of friends and friends of friends. Um, so I have access to, you know, most of their Instagrams and Facebooks. And uh, and if I don't know them, I still have access to social media. So what I would do is go on people's social media, people who bought tickets, and get a photo from their life, um, maybe something, a significant life moment or um you know, traveling or a wedding or whatnot. And I'd Photoshop my face onto their memories. So it might be a wedding photo and I'm I'm Photoshopped onto the dad of my friend or, or something. And so when they come to the event and the like slideshow of like Lucy's life, the photos are actually photos of, from their life that I've decided are my memories. That was really fun because when you saw yourself part of the decor, um, people really were more engaged. I also printed them out and made like a memory board, you know, somewhere on the slideshow and somewhere on this board. And so people, you know, wanted to take the photo of, you know, I Photoshop a baby picture of me onto someone's like family photo, replace their baby sister with my, you know, just, I still see it in their house. But anyways, it's just finding little ways to incorporate the guests into the comedy. It takes a little extra effort. Um, but I, I'm kind of a nerd and love doing, you know, that kind of creepy creepy detailed work uh so anyway it, for that event it was super fun and it made it um interesting and incorporated i don't know, guess did you have a good turnout um yeah we we were going for about um you were trying to keep it small enough that you feel personal in in the of course yeah so i wanted about 100 people and we got 100 <clears throat> people and um it was, I mean, everyone seemed to have a really good time and get the joke. I think people didn't understand quite what they were getting into, but they sort of, tr- I built trust with my community that it's going to be a good time and funny. Yeah. And so once they got there, they were like, oh my God, because uh, we had an open casket and we did, um, you know, say my sister-in-law did an opera, uh, time to say goodbye performance, uh, the photo booth was super fun. You know, we just had all the fun little details. So speaking about bringing guests, outside guests in that aren't that don't necessarily know you, let's talk about time. Um, you're bringing outside guests in that don't necessarily know you, and then you're incorporating them into the event. How much time is this taking you? Um, uh, yeah, it takes time <laughs> uh, to build that uh the thing is you are you talking about just even photoshopping or just like in general how to build like incorporate them into the i'm talking about everything it takes from the moment that the guests decide that they want to come somehow you know who these guests are they're not these are maybe exclusive uh guests coming here i assume uh, they know you know that they're coming, so you're able to then vet them and find information about them to include their Amen. personal information into that event. So all the way up until whatever your cutoff time is, you've got to now bring all of this information together that you found out about all of your guests, a hundred as you said. Mm-hmm. Now you've got to creatively incorporate it into your event. How much time is that taking? Um. Yeah. I mean, it takes. The thing is, I find that we waste so much time, like, just, you know, watching shows and, you know, Mm. just all that downtime. You'd be surprised how, like, easy it is to sit on your computer and grab a photo. photo I mean, again, I'm pretty um, proficient in Photoshop just from being a little kid that was always on it and trying to Photoshop myself on the thing. So that's a pretty quick thing for me to do, but I think... Yeah, it takes a lot of it takes a lot of time, and especially like the guests at last minute, which is, you know, RSVP. They just they aren't they're not going to be a part of it the same way. I can I can detail them in other ways, like for Christmas party, I made um, uh, individual stockings for the guests, but they're these like mini ones, and 
kind of funny, so I just painted their name, you know, so that they're, like, on the fireplace, and um, that's probably not clear, but uh, that I can do quickly. But, yeah, for Photoshop, like, doing the more unique details, so I kind of actually have to train the people in my sort of guest list community that it's uh, to their benefit to to let to RSVP soon, to be clear about the they let their mm-hmm. yes be yes and their no be no and yeah um i think and a lot of people are starting to see that and they because they're excited to see what i might do um yeah it's very unique with someone in their city that might not be in la or in new york or in a major city how could they start an event like the events that you are starting what mindset do they need to be in where how where do they need to go what are the resources that they could be using um yeah, I mean, th- there's a lot of great event resources online. Um, it the attitude it just depends on how you know you how you break the ice with people because if once people feel like they're able to be themselves, they're gonna leave anything feeling good. Um, and when they feel like they've been confined or trapped or weren't able to express themselves the way that felt genuine, I think that's when you know it's not really just doesn't have it make an impact the event so i it's figuring out having the attitude to figure out what's how to make it about other people um in my case i'm making it about other people while also seeming very narcissistic which is kind of fun and funny um because uh, my brand you know my my company's called i like lucy and it's uh it's a play on I love Lucy because we're not really ready to commit <laughs> that far, but yeah, no, um, but uh, uh, so I think it's just choosing activities and things to to allow people to break down walls, and and some groups are attracted to different things. Like my, I attract a certain type of person to my events. A lot of them are um, a little funny and quirky, um, but some people it's just not their humor. Yeah, so. Um, so it's finding that niche of people and then obviously once you have a following they're going to come to your events yeah they 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 should get it um and and then they're a part of it you know they're a part of what makes it uh good you know a lot of that's a lot of feedback too it's like oh i loved everyone who came to your party well like did you build your following first or did you just do your events and then the following just organically built so it's all like friends of friends of friends. Uh, so I threw, I started throwing parties, and I I'm like very extroverted. I like new people. I like meeting, uh, seeing new faces. And so I'm like, yeah, bring a friend, bring a friend. And so as I kept throwing events, and that they were fun to people, and you know, oh, can I bring these people? And so it's just it's organically growing. It's, um, it will be right now. It's more of a community, um of people who you know want to have fun together but i think uh down the road the goal is that it's you know certain just a certain brand of um uh, good time if you needed to create an event for backpack which is the dj booking app what would that event look like well my dream event would be <laughs> your dream event okay <laughs> okay well, my dream <laughs> event that involves backpack um would be a a silent disco dj off competition like a a dance off okay so you'd get three of your different vibe you know all of your djs have like their own kind of thing so you pick maybe three dancey vibes but it could be like you know urban r&b hip-hop um electronic music uh house i have no idea what sure, <laughs> what kind sure, of music. sure. so it's a it's a battle it's, it's a, a battle it's, it's a, a dance off it's a dance off so with silent discos i'm a sucker for them i prefer silent disco in the like house party environment because it's so hilarious that people could be dancing and then you could take off your headphones and have a normal conversation with someone and people are going crazy but it'd be fun to do it where it's silent disco so each a headphone has depending on which channel the headphone is on. It's mm-hmm. either red, green, or blue. Um, that's what DJ you'd be listening to. So maybe one DJ is blue light, green light, red light. And so you can see if the person has the crowd based on the lights on the headphones. 
Um, of course, some of that's subjective based on what people like to dance to, but it still would be fun if someone was doing a killer job communicating through one head, one channel, and then you see who had the room at that time, and it'd be kind of like a fun competition, and people could be loyal to their uh, DJ, and, you know. That's I know, awesome. It's just like a fun dance party that's with three clear different sounds, and yeah. What unique thing would you do to incorporate the people? Um... Yeah, for this one. The thing is, what in this case it's interactive, so they're choosing. You know, they're part of the the competition mm-hmm. by choosing which you know DJ they like or what channel they're on. So um, I don't know if you have to do it as much, but some of the things I like to do are just even in the details of like the drinks and the cocktails and the food, and you know picking a random guest and it being like their specialty cocktail and they have no idea they didn't like pick it or you know it's like mm. Dan's Moscow Mule and a picture of Dan he's like what <laughs> like when he sees it so and then people talk if they're friends with Dan they're all laughing because in a way they know him so they're part of you don't have to do so many details for every single person I think it's fun as much as I can do but some of those times it's just, it's subtle it's like it's how you title the you know the name cards or yeah um um even in the photo booth, like, um, doing unique, unique props that, that aren't just the, like, hats and boas and, you know, sticks with the sign, something that allows people's humor to come out, um, so it's sort of, like, all the things encompassing it that make them feel good about going on the dance floor, having a good time, they feel free because they've been made comfortable by the vibe of the party that it still can look nice and super cool, but, when you see like little jokes just sort of sprinkled throughout just how you title popcorn or whatever like people sort of their guard comes down i want people to be able to commission you for work so if someone else wanted to utilize you for services where could they find you what do you offer um how can they contact you and collaborate with you well my phone number is (laughs) um (laughs) there's the internet you know uh so I like Lucy.com. You can contact me. Easy enough. You can join my. You can apply to join my guest list if you're in LA. Um, you have to answer some really important questions about what moves you on the dance floor. Um, yeah, Instagram right now. I'm underscore I like Lucy, and <laughs> I like Lucy is currently occupied by a 13 year old boy from 2003. So now he's like not 2003, like from 2011 or something so now he's old or yeah right? he's probably like 20 and uh he i like he has one follower it's so bad and i can't figure out how to get it because he doesn't know the password oh anyway, no it's so, <laughs> like and i've like and the caption his his about me is i really like lucy and i think after reading like some comment threads uh, it just seemed like he had a crush on a girl named Lucy and he made the account. Oh, wow. <laughs> he doesn't know how to get back on it. So anyway, that's why I'm underscore. I, I guess you need to, like, get the big guns and, like, you could, there's ways you can. Contact Instagram. Yeah, but it's it's a pain. Like, you got to have, like, you know, your real, like, proper lawyer and things. And I'm just, mm. I'm just yeah. an underground little, party little, thrower. Yeah. I'm, I'm not. It's a little <laughs> bit much, yeah. I'm not there yet. No, there's not that much at stake. Uh but someday um so yeah you can find me there yeah i i'm i like working with people who want to do something a little different so i'm not i'm not your girl for you know your normal bar mitzvah or wedding or i'm your girl if you want to kind of be a little clever and and play around with a clever bar mitzvah <laughs> yeah let's do a little something. <laughs> i mean look i don't know how it all works it's but but misfits i don't even want to go into that game it is a world (laughs) it is it is amazing yeah (laughs) Uh, i want to go to a bat mitzvah (laughs) i don't know if i'm ready to no yeah just like or a really funny uh, 40th birthday party or you know a company company party trying to do something a little unique with the employees and stuff like that yeah i i i love playing around with that i had clients who are french and we did a their their fourth of july which is the 14th of july bastille day party and um we just did all the french cliches and we made a fake museum in their home of all the french fine art and i photoshopped their faces onto like napoleon and and monet portraits and you know nice certain things that when you see when you walk through the gallery you see their face 
anyway, so people were already like the primed when they came up to the party and saw that like you know all the vases just had like bouquets of baguettes and that's clever definitely yeah, just lots of funny definitely. cliches like that just so if you want to do something funny and kind of just go oh. corporate events that yes contact i like lucy i think that would be <laughs> awesome for the office yes <laughs> yeah make your show your employees that you have a sense of humor yeah get that stick out of your booty <laughs> I'm going to kind of wrap it up, and we're going to transition into a song of my choosing. Ooh. And what I want you to do is I want you to just take a step back and just listen to the song. And then I want you to chime in with what type of event this song would be appropriate for. Maybe uh, an I Like Lucy event. I don't know. But uh, be descriptive and describe what event this song and this vibe, this energy, this mood would okay. be appropriate for. Okay. Uh, 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 mm, mm. Okay. This is Tuxedo Take a Picture. By who? By Tuxedo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an idiot. Take a Picture by Tuxedo. Take this is their second by. album called Tuxedo 2. What year? Ah, uh, 2017. Maybe? Oh, I thought I was yeah, like, let's do a 70s party. Yeah, it's a it's a 70s vibe band that that came out. I want to say in like 15 by Mayor Hawthorne and the producer Jake One. Oh, I'm and, so out of the loop. And it's just a it's a 70s vibe band that is not from the 70s. That's kind of fun. Yeah. So that would be even fun for a like a throwback party even though it's like still like new and old you know you can't really do a full throwback you're not gonna get it i mean if you wanted to do a cover band that's a whole other thing but like this is a cool vibe this feels i feel like you could do it in a lot of different scenarios it just depends on what again vibe you're trying to accomplish at your event so if it's sort of like a Groovy. This song on Backpack is chosen a lot for meetups. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I get that. Yeah, I'm like, it feels even like it would be at a cool company party. I don't mean it like that. It, not to. It feels like I'm talking about like <laughs> that. Uh, Steve Carell would be playing it at the office. I don't mean that, but like, just that kind of. Yeah, it's a good vibe. It's a good time. Good. Yeah. I'm, I need to work on my description, my descriptive words about <laughs> describing music. Any final words, Lucy? Um, I did my best. <laughs> <laughs>